Hiya and welcome back to my channel. Uh, just if you haven't been here before, hi, my name is Sam. I live here with my partner on our three acre small holding in North Wales. Us, like most of England and Wales, have ha actually had a nice few days. It's been really quite warm and lovely, so we have just kind of embraced it and uh, had a couple of family days out um, and just soaked in the nice weather. But I think today is gonna be the last nice day that we're having, so I'm gonna make the most of it. I wanna say nice, I mean, it's still, cloudy and windy but it's quite warm and it is dry so I'm gonna make the most of it hopefully today and get a load of jobs done. Um, there are just some boring maintenance jobs that it's just so much easier to do when it's dry like mowing and things like that so I'm gonna get a batch of mowing done um, and then we're gonna go into the garden and do a bit of harvesting and I will take you along with me. As I say it's quite breezy out there so I might not be able to do much chit chat but I'll show you what we get done and I'll check in with you in a bit. and stuff with it. <laughs> So of course, the second I've said it's going to be a dry day, so I'll get some mowing done, it started raining. So I'm abandoning the mowing plan for now, but that does lead me on to talk about something that's on my mind at the moment. So this mower was like the only big, big thing we bought for the land maintenance here and our small holding. Um, I'm not saying we didn't buy other things, we did, but this was the you know big significant investment that we thought quite a lot about because it was not cheap. We weren't sure which way to go, you know, should we get the mower, should we try and get like a mini tractor or something like that that could have different attachments on it but we are looking at how much that was going to cost so it was just not possible for us. So we ended up getting this and I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it because while it is very good and when in the summer when everything's really dry it's easy peasy and I'm out and I've mowed most of it out there within a few hours. But as you can see, when it's wet, it's a pain in the ass. And it doesn't have to be wet for that to be true. It just has to be some moisture in the grass, which here is like 10 months of the year. So I've kind of been weighing up in my head what's the, you know, what's the best thing to do here. Um, I know that you might be shouting at me that I should get some animals to help me with this, and it has crossed my mind, and I have been thinking about it. I've spoken to some people about it, and it seems likely that you're trading out the, time doing the actual mowing itself to animal care which i don't actually hate the idea of but i know that we go we're a long way from home here and we do like to go home which means if i don't mow the grass before we go away for a couple of days um well then the grass gets a bit longer and this becomes a bit of a bitch of a job whereas if you know as soon as you've got livestock that that becomes a lot harder to to travel and things and we're so far away from our support network and while we don't go away a lot you know as soon as you've got living creatures here that you're leaving that need to be cared for, it, it, it's something to think about. So we do already have chickens, so it's not like we don't already have to think about that when we go away. And we do have a couple of local people that can help us out for a couple of days here and there. So I think something that, you know, something like that, that's a check in on it kind of job might be okay. And this has kind of led me to the thought, and tell me if this is crazy uh, for any of you who have experience, um, that the answer might just be 
Does that make sense? I'm mowing quite well around my garden beds um, just because I do a lot of that by hand because it's between the beds and I've got a little hand trimmer thingy and I'm quite happy to be out there doing it. But I can't do that on three acres. Um, and it's the food forest area, which at the moment is obviously just young trees and a couple of beds here and there with some like perennial herbs and the Welsh onions and things like that. Um, and if that's the bit I'm struggling to get to, how about running a few geese across sort of that acre and a half? Things I need to think about there are fencing. Now, if we were going to get sheep or goats or something like that, we would have to do loads of work on the fencing here. It's falling down in places. The actual boundary fence is okay, um, but it would need a bit of touching up. How much fencing is required to keep geese in? Don't know. I would have to look that up. But ultimately, I love the idea of running geese. I know that it's done in like orchards and things. People run geese in an orchard um, to keep the grass down without having to mow. I don't know. I'm going to think about that over the winter because if I'm going to get them, then that'll be in spring. So um, if you have any advice or experience with geese, then please do share. But forgetting about grass for a minute, it's still raining a little bit. Not so much that I can't be out here doing work, but too much for the mower to be able to cope with. I spoke a little bit on my previous video about corn, about the sweet corn that I've grown. Um, absolute chuffed, loving it. Absolutely, I like. I think it's my proudest achievement of this whole season is the success we've had with that corn patch. And we've been eating fresh corn for the last few weeks, um, but I think the one I had last night just had like one tiny little spot of brown and I thought maybe now is the time where it all just has to come out um, and I have to preserve it in one way or another because I really don't want them to go over and waste any out in the field. It's been lovely just pulling them off the plant and eating them fresh but I think today is the day to pull the rest um, and get preserving. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is a, a few different things. I don't have enough out there to be sweet corn sufficient for the year and I probably don't really have enough to bother trying to do any like mass preservation but what I want to do is now that I'm reasonably confident that I'll be able to grow sweet corn again next year and I can grow more um, and I can give more space to it now that I know that it can be grown here um, I want to know how I like it preserved and how we're actually going to use it so I think I'll do a bit of all the ways and then I can learn and take you know I can taste test those see what we like see what we use so that I know what I want to do next year when hopefully I have a bigger harvest and I can be putting up hopefully enough sweet corn for the year so what I'm going to do I think is throw some whole corn on the cobs into the freezer so that we can cook those straight out of the freezer and see how we like that then I think I'll do some shucking and I will can some up and I will freeze some and we'll see how nice they are. Obviously if I can get them canned that would be ideal because freezer space is at a premium but we usually buy frozen corn rather than canned corn at the moment if we're shopping at the supermarket so um, I, have to, I have to do some canning and see how we like our home canned version of sweet corn and hopefully I can find a way to make that nice. Um, so that we can have a sweet corn on the shelf, but we will see. I'm gonna try different ways and see what we like. So we'll do some small batch preservation of that sweet corn, but first we go get there and pick it. So let's do it. As you can see, it was pretty breezy while I was out there, so I did give up trying to talk to you. Um, so basically, I'm just pulling the cobs off of these corn plants, and I'm trying to get rid of as many bugs as I can, because there was some earwigs and some wood lice making their homes in these. So I'm just pulling the outer leaves off um, and trying to get rid of any evidence of bugs before I take them inside. My plan was to bring all the cobs in um, and do one big harvest, but there were some really little ones. I didn't know whether there's enough time for them to grow on anymore or if they're just not going to mature, and in which case that's fine. Either way, I've left the really tiny ones out there on the plants. So I thought he was coming to love me, but it turns out he just wanted some corn. I 
I learnt my lesson from the cabbage harvest to try and get as many bugs off before you bring the veg inside your house because you would not believe how many bugs can be harboured in one cabbage until you bring it into your kitchen and put it on your kitchen side. Okay, so we're back inside in dry clothes and um, it is horrifically rainy out there now so I'm going to give up on my outside jobs for now and instead I'm going to get to dealing with this corn straight away. So first off, all I'm going to do is literally take some of these IKEA Ziploc bags and just bung a few of these whole corn on the cobs in these. I'm just sticking them straight in the freezer, no blanching. Nothing else. I don't have a vacuum sealer, so no vacuum sealing. And we'll literally just pop them in here um, and pop them in the freezer. We've been enjoying having corn on the cob just out the side um, since we since they've been ripe in the garden. So um, I figure if we can elongate that by having some in the freezer, that would be fab. So that's what I'm going to do now. So all they did outside was take off some of the outer leaves anywhere where there was evidence of bugs, basically. I just peeled off those layers um, and left those outside and made sure I got any bugs I could out of the top of these because sometimes there were just some buggies hiding in these little crevices at the top. So make sure I've got rid of all of those and then otherwise I'm just going to pop them, husks and all, straight into my freezer. You get some different sized ones, some of them are chunkier, some of them are less so. So I'm going to just do a mixture of all the different sizes in all the different ways. So just so I can see how each kind of size does um, in each preserving method. Um, I assume the freezer as a whole cup will be most forgiving because even if the kernels are a little bit small you can just eat them whereas as soon as you try and chop them off and the kernel on they're small that might be a bit tricky but hey ho. Now I'm going to get as much of the air out of this bag as I can. And then I'll just pop it straight in the freezer. I think I'll do two bags of these and then whatever's left I'm gonna split between canning and freezing. But I think what I will do is once I put these in the freezer, I will end this video here and I will do the freezing and the canning prep on a different video. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I will keep you up to date with how this goes and which version of preserved sweet corn we like the most. Um, but I'll leave it there for today, so cheers guys. Oh, just to add, I've been keeping the husks from all the corns we've eaten and I've been drying them out, um, not, not doing anything special, literally just hanging them around the kitchen. And then once they're dry, they're just going in that little cotton baggie over there and once that's full, I'll put that in storage somewhere and then we just use these as fire lighters throughout the winter. Well, that's definitely the easiest way.